This lesson deals with writing mesh equations for circuits that have current sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 3 starting on page 38. In our last lesson, we took a look at an algorithm for writing mesh equations for circuits that had only resistances and only voltage sources. We'll take a look at in this lesson is how to deal with a current source. There are two possibilities, one with current source with a parallel resistance and then a current source without a parallel resistance. If we have a parallel resistance, we can do a source transformation like we did in chapter two and also which we did for the node equations and convert this into a series voltage source and a series resistance. The value of the voltage source is just the value of I sub S times R. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose that we want to solve for the current I zero in this resistance and I want to use the mesh equation technique because I've got a planar circuit. So I need to convert this current source, if I can, into a voltage source. And since I have a parallel resistance, I can do the source transformation of chapter two. So let's do that. The voltage source will be two milliamps times 4K. It'll have its plus terminal pointing in the same direction as the arrow was in our current source. So the plus sign will be up here, minus on the bottom. And then we'll have a series 4K resistance. Okay, so I've got two meshes here. I'll call them I sub A and I sub B just to be different. So since I have two unknowns, I'll form a blank two by two matrix, two rows and two columns, and be filling that in with my entries of resistances. On the left-hand side of the equation, I'll have a column vector with two rows and one column. And then my unknowns here are IA and I sub B. So since this column is associated with I sub A, I'm gonna go in that mesh and add up all the resistances. So 3K plus 2K plus 1K goes in row one, column one. And then what's between meshes one and two is a 2K resistor, so we're just gonna take the negative of that summation of resistance, in this case, just one resistance. And if we go around the mesh counterclockwise, we see a drop of five volts. That's our first equation in two unknowns. Second mesh, you can add up all the resistances here. This will be in row two, column two, so 5K plus 4K plus 2K. Between meshes two and one, I have a 2K resistor. What's in row one, column two is also in row two, column one. And if you go around the mesh counterclockwise, you see a drop of minus eight volts. My second equation in two unknowns. So let's add all this up together, get 6K and 11K. And now to solve for I zero, I would need to know I sub A and then subtract I sub B. So let's solve for those two currents. So since I sub A is associated with column one, I'll bring the left-hand side of the equation over to here in column one and find that determinant divided by the determinant of my mesh equations. And so this times this is 55,000 and then this is a minus 16,000. And then this is 66 times K squared and this is a minus 4K squared. It turns out to be 0.629 milli. To solve for I sub B, we'll bring the left-hand side of the equation over to the column associated with I sub B. So it'll be this column, same denominator. So that was 62 times K squared. So now I've got this times this, which is minus 48K, and then this is a plus 10K. It gives me a, a minus 0.6129 milli. So when I subtract those two, I get 1.214 milliamps. So we can use our algorithm just like we did before. Let's next take a look at the case of a current source without a parallel resistance. There's actually two things that can happen, and let me use an example to show you each of those. So here I've got a circuit with one current source, but I have no parallel resistance, so I can't do a source transformation. Suppose I want to solve for the current I1 and I2, and that would be related to mesh currents that are here. Now, since I can't do the source transformation, I have to go back to Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's assign mesh currents to the three meshes here, call them I1, I2, and I3. I'm going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law to solve for the three unknowns. I'll pick the direction of current flow and the resistances like we did for the mesh equations. I'll just pick it in the same direction as the mesh current. So the current in this resistance is gonna be I1 minus I3, and the current in this resistance is gonna be I1 minus I2. So the rise in voltage is then equal to I1 minus I3 times 1K, and then plus I1 minus I2 times 2K. Group together all the things that multiply I1, I2, and I3. And so I've got 1K plus 2K, so that's 3K. And then I've got just 1K times I3 and then minus 2K times I2. Do the same thing around mesh two. Again, I'll assign the direction of current flow and the resistances to be the same as the mesh current. Again, it's just one of several possibilities. And so I've got a drop across here of I2 minus I1 times 2K, drop across here of I2 minus I3 times 1K, and then just I2 times 2K. The rise in voltage, there is none here, just uh, drops. Again, let's group together all the things that multiply I1, I2, and I3. So for I1, I just have a minus 2K. 
for I2, I have a plus 1k, a plus 2k, and another plus 2k. So I got 5k. And then for I3, I just have this one, minus 1k. So two equations and three unknowns. Now, if I go around this mesh to write my last equation, I would need to know the voltage drop across the current source. But this doesn't have a fixed relationship. It can be positive, it can be negative, it could even be zero. I can't write a Kirchhoff's voltage law around here without introducing another unknown. But the mesh current I3 is 3 milliamp current source. So there's my third equation in the three unknowns. Being in 3 milliamps for I3, then I'd have a minus 3 volts here, bring it over here to a plus 15. Likewise, minus 3 volts in my second equation, bring it over here as a plus 3 volts. So now I've got a 2 by 2 matrix. And I can solve for I1 and I2. But let's use Kramer's rule again. So I'll take the column associated with I1 to solve for I1 and bring the 15 and the 3 over here. And then divide by the determinant of the mesh equations that I've written. And then likewise for I2, I'll bring this column over to column 2, do the same thing. So this times this is 75,000, and then this times this is 6,000. This is 15 times k squared, and then a minus 4k squared, and that gives me 7.36 milliamps. For this one, I have 9k, and then plus 30k, and then same denominator, and that gives me 3.545 milliamps. These are the two currents we were trying to solve for. Now, one other observation here. Suppose that I didn't do that substitution of the 3 milliamps. Instead of substituting I3 into my equations that I had written previously, suppose that I don't do that. Just write one more equation in the unknowns I1, I2, and I3 in the sense that 3 milliamps is just equal to 1 times I3. Here I form a set of equations using Kirchhoff's voltage law and actually Kirchhoff's current law. What's interesting to note here is that on the left-hand side of the equation, I have my 12-volt source and my 3 milliamp source. You could develop an algorithm for doing this type of stuff, but I'm going to leave that for another course and introduce a couple other ideas. There's also a second possibility for a current source without a parallel resistance in that it might be between two meshes. The last example, it was in the outer part of a mesh. Let me call this I1, I2, and I3, and let me solve for I1, I2, and I3. And I can't use my algorithm because I can't do a source transformation on this. But what I could do is to write Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop like I did before. So I'm going to sign a drop across here, drop across here, drop across here, and a drop across here. Just in the same direction as my mesh currents I1 and I3. Now if I go around this loop and come back this way, I'd have to know the voltage across this current source. But what I could do is just skip that and go around the outer mesh here. So combine meshes 1 and 3 together and just go around the mesh this way. So let's do that. So the rise in voltage is 100 volts, and I have a drop here of 3 ohms times I1 minus I2. And let's go over here. So I've got 2 times I3 minus I2. And then I've got 50 volts as a drop. And then I've got a drop here of I3 times 4 ohms. And then I've got a drop across here of 6 times I1. So that's my equation in the three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. And combine again things that multiply I1, I2, and I3. So I1, I've got a 3. I've got a 6. And that gives me 9. And for I2, I've got a 3 here. And then a 2, which is 5. And for I3, I've got 4, and I've got a 2 over here, so it gives me 6. The 50 on our side of the equation, I've got 100 minus 50. That's one equation and three unknowns. What I'll do next is go around mesh 2, and let me just back up here so you can see how I'm going to do that. Okay, so again, I'll pick a direction of current to agree with the mesh current. don't have to do this, but just consistent with what we did previously. Let's go around this mesh. Okay, So the rise in voltage, there is none, just drops around the loop here. So it's going to be 10 ohms times I2. And then the current in here is going to be I2 minus I3 times 2. And the current here is I2 minus I1 times 3. And that's this second equation in the three unknowns. Again, we can group the things that multiply I1, I2, and I3. I1 here times minus 3. And then I have I2 times 10. 2 and 3, that's 15. And then I have minus 2 times I3. That's my third term. Three equations and three unknowns. I still need a third equation. But just like in the previous case, my current source is related to, in this case, two of the mesh currents. The, the 5 amps that's here is equal to I3 minus I1. And that's what's on the next page. 
So I can put that in matrix form. So 5 amps is equal to minus 1 times I1 plus 1 times I3. So again, here I've got three equations and three unknowns. What's interesting here, again, all my sources are turning out to be on the left-hand side of the equation. I'm going to use that idea to prove a theorem in a few more pages. Again, I put this in my calculator and found the values of I1, I2, and I3. And they were 1.75 amps, 1.25 amps, and 6.75 amps. Combining two meshes like we did in this example is sometimes called a super mesh, and it's similar to the idea of a super node. We're creating this large node, in this case a large mesh. And so this is how we will write mesh equations with current sources.